oh my god how do i pass that is on my first attempt how do i make my cbt hmm where do i get all the money from to take on this program am i going to catch up with time am i qualified enough to take on this journey well hello my name is blessing and welcome to my nursing and midwifery cancer uk journey series and in this series i'm going to be talking about my personal experience taking on this program and how i finally found myself as a registered nurse in the uk and in this series i'm also going to be helping you answer some of those burning questions i know you have running in your mind so ride on with me throughout this series and you're gonna get all the answers you're looking for The first thing you need as far as your eligibility is concerned is your identity. So um, your in terms of your identity, it's basically just um, sending in your full names. It's going to ask you your full names and your status, you're married, you're single and all of that. And if for any reason you've changed your name at some point, you have documents that carry different names, you have to send in a proof. A document to prove that or to prove that you've changed that name and that is legal for example um uh, let's say you got married and you've adopted um, your husband's name of course um your name is definitely going to change from then on in um all your documents so you need to send in a marriage certificate to show that um you actually change your name because of marriage and if for any other reason you change your name all you need is just a proof of a, or a legal document to prove that you changed your name legally so that's it about um identity one other thing in terms of your identity that's going to be needed is your passport number um your passport is required it's also a form of an identity and this is very important um because you need to prove your birth date i mean like they all have to coincide because when putting in um, information about you, your personal information, obviously you're going to put in your date of birth and all of that. And so having a legal document like a passport is equally going to, um, is a form of proving your identity because it carries your, 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 your birth date and all of that, your names, you know, so you need your passport and not just because of your identity, because you can use the passport to register for your exams, your RGCBT, you can use your passport for that. And so you would, you need that um, legal document. Um, equally, because it's an overseas program, and of course you need to travel, so you equally need um, a passport. A lot of these things I'm going to talk about as I go along, the costing and um, all what you need to know about all of this document now that is the second thing you need um, the other thing you need in terms of your eligibility uh, has to do with your nursing and midwifery certificate which is very important um, if you are a nurse have you got a valid certificate these are the things you need to ask yourself if you haven't got a very a valid certificate what have you got is it a diploma is it um, uh, a transcript um, is it, you know, or just a statement saying that you, if you've graduated as a nurse from so, so and so school or so, so and so university, what do you have to prove that you are a nurse? Um, most of the times what the council requires is, um, a valid certificate and you must not be a degree nurse just to emphasize before you take on this program. So state registered nurse um you 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 are a state registered nurse you're holding um, um an hnd um you have a degree yes you are eligible to take on this program all you need is just your valid um certificates to say this is the qualification i hold so that's very important so you if you if you don't have a, a valid certificate then you need to start looking into into that one of the other things you're going to be asked for as far as your eligibility um test is concerned 
has to do with your registration with your nursing and midwifery um, council body in your own country. Um, for Cameroon, um, if you're from Cameroon, I'm going to be making reference mostly to Cameroon because that's where I come from. And um, at least I can share um, my experiences and examples and direct all other people or nurses from Cameroon who are interested in taking this program. But if you're coming from any other country um, overseas, then it's important that you get to know um, what form of documents you need and where you are going to get them in your country but i'm going to just be telling you what you need and this is general for everyone then i can make reference back there um to cameroon so um like i said the other thing you need is your registration with your nursing and midwifery council in your country so i think every country has this all you need to do is register i mean after you've left school and then you're given a valid certificate to say yes you are a registered nurse in your country and eligible to practice um, so talking about registering your nursing and midwifery council i think this is as important as um anything you can think of please if you have not registered with your nursing and midwifery or a body back home in your country please you need to because this is very important there's no way you are going to practice in the uk without being registered first in your home country so this is very important and the other thing you would need in terms of eligibility check has to do with um, a certificate of non-conviction some people call it a police clearance this is because um the, the professional body here in the uk tries to make sure that the nurses they take from overseas are of good conduct and a good background standing but this doesn't mean that if if you've had any caution from the police at some point you are totally um, not eligible for the program no what to do is they're going to ask you what was the effect of the crime committed what was the punishment served it's going to be analyzed and then if they're happy with everything you've shared with them then um they're going to tell you you're still eligible for the program so all all it all has to do with um whatever you share or the document you share with them being analyzed and then they say all right you're eligible go for this program the other thing um you're going to need as far as this eligibility check is concerned is your arts your english um exam you need this this is very important um the international english language testing system which is properly um, popularly known as the arts test you know is to test it's a proof of your english language skills and i'm going to be talking about the arts as well in the next series where i will share about all the exams that you need to go through um, in order to scale through this process so you need an arts um, test and you need a required score to be able to be eligible for this program i'm going to talk about all of this later yeah i just want to give a rundown of what you need as far as your eligibility is concerned so then you need that sec um another thing you would need is um your health status certificate to prove that um you are in good health standing and fit to practice in the uk so it's just about getting a letter from your you know your medical doctor um to say that your health is in order and you're very fit to practice in the uk the now if you've lived in the uk for more than three um, months uh, you'll be asked to give what we call a DBS certificate, which is also like, you know, it's, it's the UK's own system um, of doing like background checks on you in terms of um, any criminal activity and all of that. So it's same like a non-conviction, but it's just um, that um, which pertains to the UK. So if you're, if you're in the UK already, you'll be asked to present a DBS um, certificate. And... Um, Talking about registration, I just want to go back to that slightly because I remember if you are registered with several different bodies, for example, let's say you've worked in Cameroon, you registered in Cameroon, you move from Cameroon and you decide to, or at some point you worked in Nigeria for a good number of years, as long as you've worked there, I think it's for more than six months, um, you'll be also asked to present a registration 
certificate for that country to show that you were eligible to practice and you were legally registered in that country to practice so you would have to present um, a registration certificate for that body so if you are registered in several different countries say you've practiced in several different countries you would have to present a certificate for all of those countries you've practiced um, in I think that's a requirement by the council so if you have a rundown of all of the eligibility um, checklists I've mentioned then you have to analyze you have to assess this to see if um, have I got all of these am I ready to start this program if you have all of these then you are as good and as ready to go so let's do the rundown of the program or of the eligibility checklist you will need to go through this program one an identity check which has to do with your names um, a change of name um, legal document to prove that you've changed your name or you've got to marry at some point you've adopted a new name so you can present something like a marriage certificate you will need that um, you're also going to need uh, your certificate to show that you are legally registered as a nurse in your country or as a nurse and a midwife in your country you are equally going to need an IELTS test result and you need the required score to be able to be eligible for this program you are equally going to need a legal or a valid um, nursing and midwifery certificate to show that you've graduated from um, a known school from overseas back where you come from and this is a legal school with trained nurses and midwives you know and you've actually graduated and you have a valid certificate so you need that you also need to just give um, a health declaration certificate to prove that all your your health status is in order and you are fit for practice so i think these are the basic things and uh, i think the last one i forgot to mention is your passport which obviously very important you have to present that as well so these are the basic things you will need um, as far as taking on your eligibility test is concerned of course there are other documents you would need um i'm going to talk about them later but this these first things are the major ones the all, all other documents you need has to do with maybe um getting some documents from your school like a transcript but these are provided directly by your school and this brings me to talk about um some of the things that are equally going to be included in your eligibility check now when you start this program and you've provided all of this information all of these documents i've talked about there's going to be a portion on that portal where you have to put in a contact number or an email of your registration body for net or the um, nursing and midwifery regulator body in your country and you equally have to put a contact and email number, a contact number and an email for the school um, you graduated or the school in which you did your training with. You have to put that because they are going to send the school and this regulation, regulation body um, uh, messages to tell them this person has started this application and they will need some form of documents from them. Like I said, a transcript and maybe just a proof another legal proof to show that yes you graduated and you're eligible for practice so very important before you start this program you need to let your regulation body know and you need to let your school know that i'm starting this program and i have given this contact as um, a preference contact for uh, the, the nursing and midwifery council to call you through or to write send you an email and if they do please um I would like you to respond in this slide so they need to be aware that you've you've had this you've started this program and they will be expectant you know and they'll know how to respond when they eventually get um such emails from the nursing and midwifery council this is very very important so make sure you put a valid number make sure you put a valid email because if if you put an email or a contact number where it is not valid and you keep sending messages they keep calling and it's not going through this totally slows down your process where's my pen oh oops <laughs> i got it yeah i got it i got it so take your pen take a piece of paper or a booklet you know write on it my nmc journey write all of that which uh, i spoke about today the documents start doing a tick 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 um do i have this tick do i have that tick do i have this tick 
and the ones you don't have tick 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 and try getting them as soon as you can try getting them as soon as you can once you've done this you are all ready to take on this program mind you once you've gone through your eligibility test you're going to be sent a formal email and confirmation to tell you you have succeeded in your eligibility test you've had all the criteria and now we are authorizing you to take the CBT um, test of competence, which is a test of competence for nurses from overseas wishing to practice in the UK. Now, that is it about the eligibility phase and all the documents you would need to prove that you are eligible. Thank you for watching, guys. I'm very happy um, I'm sharing this with you today. And for all of those who have watched, thank you. Please share this video to as many people as possible, wherever they are from overseas nurses. I mean, who wish to practice in the UK, please share this video to them so that we can help one another. Nurses, we have to be one another's keeper. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next video and it is going to be much more interesting because i'm going to be talking about all the exams i'm going to talk about the cost of this program and hey you don't want to miss that you don't want to miss that so share guys and encourage others to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that when the next video series pops up you will be the first to see it thank you once more and i'll see you next time bye bye